To get what you want, you must sleep with your mother. You must dig up your mother's body and do what you have to do. Hearing this made Dami's blood run cold. In a quiet village called Obo, there lived a young man named Dami Lola. Known to everyone as Dami, at 25 years old, Dami had never been in a relationship and often felt the weight of being single. He had grown up in this small village with his family, dreaming of a life beyond the boundaries of Obo. Dami was the youngest of two children. His older sibling, Ajoke, often busy with responsibilities, left Dami with time to explore his dreams. His father passed away when he was still a young boy and his mother just recently passed on. He was kind but struggled to provide for the family. With limited resources, they did their best to ensure that Dami and Ajoke were taken care of. The memory of his parents was a bittersweet mix of love and loss, driving Dami to want more for himself and his future. Even as a child, Dami was drawn to the spotlight. He loved watching actors and singers, imagining himself on a big stage, performing for the crowd who cheered his name. He craved attention and dreamed to be famous. He would often stand in front of his small village audience, which usually consists of his sibling and a few friends, pretending to be a star. His imagination was limitless, and his determination to succeed was evidence to anyone who knew him. Despite his dreams, Dami's family had little money. When he finished secondary school at the age of 20, he longed to continue his education and study more. This was a disappointment, yet it also fueled his desire to succeed. He was determined to find a way to become special and make a name for himself, just like the stars he admired on television. Dami's friends often told him that he needs to work hard to grow his talents. If you work hard, they would say, you can become rich and famous. These words echoed in Dami's mind, pushing him to be the best he could be. He practiced singing, acting, and dancing whenever he could, believing that one day his efforts would pay off. Through all his struggles, Dami never lost sight of his dreams. His heart was full of hope, and his spirit remained unbroken. He knew that if he stayed focused and determined, he could rise above his circumstances and become the artist he always dreamed of being. One day, Dami Lola knew it was time to take action if he wanted to make his dream come true. He had often seen a wealthy man around town named Mr. Ajayi. Mr. Ajayi was famous for helping people, even those who were less privileged, and Dami hoped that he might help him too. With the help of some few friends, Dami managed to get in touch with Mr. Ajayi. They called him and told him about Dami. They said, There is a talented young man who wants to speak with you. And Mr. Ajayi agreed to meet with Dami, which filled him with excitement and nervousness. On the day of their meeting, Dami was anxious but hopeful. Mr. Ajayi smiled and said, I can help you achieve your dreams, but it comes with a cost. Hearing this made Dami feel scared. He asked, What do you want me to do, sir? Mr. Ajayi replied, It is easy. You have to be brave. These words frightened Dami, but he decided to try because he was eager for wealth and success. Although, Dami was chilled at the chance to achieve his biggest dream. He couldn't shake the feeling of uncertainty. He wondered why bravery was so important. Soon, they traveled to a faraway village called Aro. 
When they arrived there, Mr. Ajayi led Dami to a small mysterious hut. This is where I got rich, Mr. Ajayi said. He told Dami to go inside, assuring him that it was safe. Inside the hut, they found an old, scary woman. Mr. Ajayi said, She is the boss. But Dami quickly realized she was more than that because she was a witch. As soon as they entered, the old woman spoke, saying, I know why you are here, Dami Lola. Her knowing his name without introduction sent chills down his spine. Dami felt a surge of fear, especially when the woman's eyes seemed to see right through him. You want to be rich and famous, she said. Dami nodded, even though his head was racing. The witch told Dami that he could become rich and famous, but she added a twist. You must pass a test of courage, she said, her voice echoing in the small hut. Dami had to face his deepest fear, a challenge he never expected. She said, you must face the darkness in the forest and return by sunshine. Only then will you prove your bravery and be worthy of your dream. As the night crept in, Dami felt a mix of fear and determination. He knew this was his moment, a chance to prove himself and achieve everything he ever wanted. With a deep breath, he stepped into the darkness ready to face whatever that laid ahead, hoping his courage would lead him to the life he dreamed of. Dami stood in the small hut, listening to the old woman. She told him, To get what you want, you must sleep with your mother. Dami was horrified. His mother had just passed away two weeks ago from an illness because they had no money for proper treatments. Confused and scared, he asked the woman, But how is that possible? My mother just passed away. The old witch replied, You must dig up your mother's body and do what you have to do. Hearing this made Dami's blood run cold. The thought was terrifying and disgusting. He decided he had to get out of there. When Dami left the hut, he saw that Mr. Ajayi was gone. He had left Dami alone in this creepy place. Panicking, Dami started to run, but soon realized he was lost in the middle of the forest. The trees seemed to close in around him, making it hard to know which way to go. After running for a while, Dami was relieved to spot a man on a motorcycle. He waved him down and asked for help to get to a place with more people. The man agreed and let Dami hop on the back of his bike. But after a short distance, the man demanded money. When Dami explained he had none, the man turned angry and accused him of being a thief. In a panic, the man attacked Dami, tearing his shirts. Fearing for his life, Dami fought back and managed to escape. He ran through the forest, scared and weak. Since he hadn't eaten all day, as he kept running, he hoped to find a way out. But the strangest and scariest part was that no matter how far he ran, he always ended up back in the front of the winch hut. It was as if the forest was playing tricks on him leading him in circles. Each time he found himself back at the hut, his thoughts became more jumbled and desperate. He started to wonder if the winch had put a spell on him because Dami felt his mind changing. He reached a point where he started thinking, maybe it was okay I do this. Like he was thinking that it was okay for him to do what the winch asked for. Even though he knew it was wrong, the forest seemed to whisper to him, making him doubt what he knew to be true. Just when he was about to give in to the madness, Dami heard the voice. It was soft but clear. 
cutting through the fog of his mind. It was his mother's voice, reminding him of the values she taught him, to be strong and to be good, and to never give up on his dream. Dami had always dreamed of being like the famous people he admired. He wanted it so bad that he started thinking he had to do anything, no matter how terrible. So, even though he was scared, Dami went back to the winch. When he agreed to do what she wanted, he wasn't sure what kind of powers were controlling him, but it didn't feel like he was fully himself. The wind smiled when he returned. My son, you have made a good choice, she said, her voice full of dark promise. You will become famous and twice as famous as you ever dreamed of. She then handed him a strange horn. Inside, there was a small black cloth with seven needles wrapped inside. Keep this safe, she told him. It will be important later. The winchness instruction sent chills down Dami's spine. She told him to find seven guys to help him dig up his mother's grave at exactly 2 a.m. And then he had to do the unthinkable. He had to sleep with his mother's body while they watched. Danny's heart pounded in his chest, but he found himself nodding as if he was under a spell. To his surprise, when he asked his friends for help, they agreed without hesitation. It was like they didn't see anything wrong with what he was asking them to do. It felt like some dark forces was controlling them too. Late that night, Dami and his friends went to the graveyard. They dug up his mother's grave as the winch had instructed. Dami's hands shook but he couldn't stop himself. When the grave was opened, he was horrified to see that his mother's body, though buried for two weeks, looked fresh as if she had just died. It was unnatural and terrifying. Dami did the awful thing the winch had told him to do while his friends stood around the grave watching silently. Their blank face made it seem like everything was normal, but Dami knew it wasn't. It was like they were all trapped in the twisted nightmare. He wondered if they were being controlled by some dark powers that had taken hold of him. After he was done, they buried his mother again. Dami felt a heavy weight of guilt and fear pressing down on him. He couldn't understand why his friends had just stood there, watching as if it was the most ordinary thing in the world. Some of them even asked him to introduce them to the winch, which made his skin crawl. Shaking and full of regrets, Dami left the graveyard. He went back to the winch hut, hoping for some answers, but when he arrived, he didn't find the winch there. Instead, a 16-year-old girl was there. Dami asked her where the winch was, but the girl simply said the woman he was looking for wasn't there. Something about the girl's calmness unsettled him, but Dami didn't ask for more answers. He just wanted to leave that place and go home. But going home didn't bring him peace. Ever since that night, Dami couldn't shake the feeling that he had made a terrible mistake. He couldn't sleep. He couldn't eat. The memory of what he had just done haunted him. It was as if a dark cloud hung over him, suffocating him with guilt and fear. As time went on, Dami started to realize that everything the witch had promised was a lie. The fame, the wealth, none of it was real. Instead, he was left with nothing but groaning sense of dread. The more he thought about it, the more he wondered if he had caused himself by following the witch instructions. Dami began to hear whispers in the night, voices that seemed to come from nowhere reminding him of what he had done 
the regret groaned at him and he couldn't escape the feeling that he was being watched. Even when he was alone, he started to see shadows moving in the corners of his eyes. He wondered if the witch powers had followed him home. Tammy couldn't sleep well, constantly having bad dreams of a mad woman chasing him with a cane. His sister Ajoke, who lived in the same house, had no idea about what he was going through. Desperate to escape his scary thoughts, Tammy decided to leave Obo village. He hoped that moving away would help him find peace. But moving away was hard because he had no money on him. He managed to hide in the back of a farmer's truck that was heading to return to supply fresh produce. He didn't know what would happen next, but he needed to get away from his nightmare. Danny thought that going to another town would help him escape his past and the bad thing he had experienced. But when he arrived at the big city of Nui, his life didn't get better. It got worse. He started working hard, pushing barrows and helping people carry their loads. But without a place to stay, life was rough. Finding food was difficult and sometimes he had to wash plates in restaurants just to eat leftovers from customers. It was tough and lonely. One day, while Dami was on the street pushing his barrow, he noticed a woman walking ahead of him. Two men were following her and they didn't look friendly. As he watched, Dami realized the men were planning to rob her. Without thinking, he rushed to help. He fought off the men and saved the woman from being hurt. The woman was thankful. She asked Dami to take her to her house, which was large and impressive. This woman, Mrs. Hadiza, was extremely wealthy and kind. She was a Aousa woman with a warm smile and she seemed genuinely interested in Dami's life. When she asked about his situation, Dami told her the truth, that he had nowhere to live and was struggling to survive. Mrs. Hadiza listened carefully and then said, I like you, Dami. You are brave and kind. Why don't you stay with me in my house? For the first time in a long while, Dami felt a glimmer of hope. It seemed like he had finally found a new chance in life, but deep down, he still felt unsure, as if something wasn't right. As Dami settled into his new life at Mrs. Hadiza's house, strange things started happening to him. He would hear whispers at night, the same kind he had heard back in Obo village. The nightmare didn't stop, and sometimes, he felt like he was being watched, even when he was alone. One night, while lying in bed, Dami heard soft footsteps outside his house. He thought it was Mrs. Hadiza checking on him, but when he opened the door, no one was there. As he turned to go back inside, he saw a shadow moving quickly down the hallway, disappearing around the corners. Dami's heart raced. He knew something wasn't right, but he didn't know who to trust. Mrs. Hadiza had been so kind to him, but now he wondered if coming to a town had been a mistake. The past seemed to be catching up with him, no matter how far he ran. The next day, Dami decided to confront Mrs. Hadiza about the strange things he was experiencing. But when he found her, she was sitting quietly, almost as if she wasn't expecting him. Before Dami could speak, Mrs. Hadiza smiled and said, Dami, there is something I need to tell you. Dami's heart pounded. She said, Ever since my husband passed away, I've been so lonely and sad. But since you came into my life, I found peace and happiness. Dami was shocked because this wasn't what he expected to hear. He was confused and he left her. 
Meanwhile, Dami Lola's life seemed to take a turn for the better. After moving into Mrs. Hadiza's house, she gave him everything he needed. Good food, a soft bed, and even new clothes. She took care of him like a mother, and for a while, Dami thought he might finally find peace. But even with all these good things, the memory of what he had done in the past wouldn't leave him alone. They followed him like shadows, always there and haunting him. Dami couldn't shake off the feeling that something wasn't right. He realized that even though he had been living there for days, he knew very little about Mrs. Hadiza. Why is this woman helping me? Who is she? Why is she so kind to me? Dami Lola kept asking himself this question, and it made him feel unease. As time went on, the haunting memories grew stronger. Dami started seeing his mother's image at night. Her face pale and sad, the disturbing dreams became more frequent, and he felt like he was losing control. One night, after another nightmare, Dami decided to confide in Mrs. Hadiza. Maybe she could help him. He went to her and shared his story, telling her everything he had done, the graveyard, the witch, and the awful things that happened. Dami also showed her the small black cloth with the seven needles that the witch had given him. Mrs. Hadiza's eyes widened when she saw it, and she immediately told him that the clothes would help him. But then, something strange happened. As Dami stood there, he began to get a voice in his head. The voice was soft but clear, and it warned him, the woman you were living with is the same witch you met before. The voice echoed. Fear gripped Dami's heart, and he couldn't stay in the house any longer. He left immediately, not even waiting to pack his tents. Dami felt lost. He had sinned, and instead of getting what he wanted, his life had become more miserable. He realized that if he didn't take responsibilities for his actions, things would only get worse. The guilt was too much to bear, and at times, he even thought about ending his life. But then, Dami made a big and unusual decision. He decided to go to his elder sister at Joke and tell her everything. When he arrived at her house, he could barely speak, but he managed to get the words out. Ajoke listened quietly, and as he finished, she broke down in tears. She was heartbroken by what her brother had done. She didn't turn him away. Instead, Ajoke became a strong support for Dami. She told him that he should start praying and ask God for forgiveness. You need to ask God and our mother for forgiveness, she told him. Dami knew she was right. If he didn't make things right, the haunting memories would never go away. Ajoke prayed with him every day, and slowly, Dami began to feel a change inside. The nightmares didn't stop right away, and the voices in his head still whispered from time to time. But with Ajoke's help, Dami started to find some peace. One night, as he was praying, Dami had a dream that was very different from others. This time, his mother appeared to him, but instead of looking sad and angry, she smiled at him. I forgive you, my son, she said softly. Dami woke up with tears in his eyes, but for the first time in a long time, they were tears of relief. Dami knew he still had a long way to go, but he was ready to face the consequences of his past and make a change. With Ajoke by his side, he felt stronger for the first time. He believed that maybe, just maybe, he could find a way to truly start over. Dami Lola's life took a new turn. After he decided to talk to a pastor who prayed, he realized that he needed to get rid of the items the winch had given him. Once he did that, he finally found peace. The fear and the guilt that had haunted him began to fade away, and he no longer faced judgment in his heart. Choosing to pray made a big difference for Danny. It helped him push away the negative thoughts 
that once made him think about ending his life. Now, Dami is a young man who prays a lot. He believed that the real wealth comes from hard work and not from short quotes or making deals with dark forces. Dami wants everyone to know that taking short quotes won't get you to your goal in life. He learned the hard way that it's better to work hard and trust in God. Looking back, it breaks his heart to think about what he did to his mother's body just to get rich quickly. It was a terrible mistake, one that still fills him with regrets. Now, Dami believes in working hard to make a living. He wants others to remember his story as a lesson. Trying to get rich or anything valuable quickly will only lead to a life full of regrets and sadness. It is much better to have faith in God, work hard, and believe in yourself. If you do this, Dami is sure that you will achieve your goal without a doubt. So, remember Dami's story. Do not be tempted by shortcuts or easy paths. Work hard, pray and stay true to yourself and you will find success and happiness in your life. The moral lesson of this story is shortcuts and evil paths will lead to regrets and sorrows. In the Bible, Proverbs 14 verse 12 reminds us that there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. Dami's quest for quick wealth, driven by desperation and a lack of faith, led him down a dark road. He learned the hard way that trying to get rich quickly by any means, especially through unethical practice, bring nothing but trouble. Another important lesson from Dami's story is the power of prayer and seeking forgiveness. After confessing his wrongs, and seeking support from his sister. Danny found peace and a new direction in life. This aligned with the Bible teaching found in 1 John 1-9, which says, If we confess our sin to God, He is faithful and He will forgive us our sin and purify us from all unrighteousness. Danny's choice to turn to prayer and seek forgiveness helped him heal and find a path to peace. Dami also learned that real success comes from hard work and trust in God rather than short cuts. This reflects the Bible teaching found in Proverbs 10 verse 4, which says, Lazy hands are made for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. By focusing on honest work and faith, Dami discovered that lasting success and fulfillment comes from dedication and integrity not from quick and dishonest gain. Ultimately, Danny's story serves as a reminder that no matter how tempting shortcuts may seem, they often lead to a greater problem. It is better to follow a path of hard work, honesty and faith, as Danny's experience shows that seeking a quick path to success can lead to a life of regrets, while working diligence and praying for guidance lead to genuine and lasting reward. Please, if you like our story, hit the like button, subscribe, drop a comment, and do not forget to share this story to your family and loved ones. See you in the next story. Bye.